All right, tonight's webinar, we're gonna talk about how I use Adobe Camera Raw in Adobe Photoshop. And I'm first gonna do a virtual demo of both. And then I'm gonna do a presentation where I talk about screenshots. So if you may be confused, you can always ask questions, but if you see the screenshots, that could really answer many questions. So we're first gonna talk about Adobe Camera Raw. Right now I'm in Bridge. So I'm going to do Adobe Camera Raw. I could right click, or open Camera Raw, Control R. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the white pounds. I'm going to find a neutral. I've already done this. I'm going to click it. It balances out the colors. And then What I like to sometimes do is zero out the highlights. You plus out the shadows. So highlights, I go all the way negative. The shadows, I go all the way positive. I like to leave the blacks and whites alone. Texture, I like to just increase by five to seven. And then sometimes I like to just increase the exposure and contrast. But the first thing, you know, the first thing I do is I set the white bounce with the white bounce tool and then I zero out the highlights. I plus out the shadows. And I sometimes like to, um, you know, adjust the exposure and contrast. And that's the basic tab. And then the curve, I like to try to make, you know, an S curve to make it try to make it more contrasting. And then the detailed, for non-portraiture, I like to use over 140. For noise reduction, I like to use 50. The color noise reduction is where, I'm gonna move my screen here, where I, right now I'm at fit view, but then you, you wanna definitely um, try to do 100%. I just started, but this is also going to be a recording. So when now I'm at zoomed at 100%. If you see black, it means you're putting in noise. So you got to look carefully at the photograph. Maybe you could zoom out to 200. But you want to take advantage of the zoom and then you want to click fit in the view. That's the detail. You know, you can add, you can add color with the color mixer. I like to leave this alone. With the color grading, you can affect the midtones, the shadows, the highlights. You can work with one, you can work with them all. The optics, I always want to have these checked. Remove chromatic aberration and use profile corrections. When I check off remove chromatic aberration, it takes away color problems of the image like in the edges. And then I check, you know, use profile corrections, talks about the lens I was using. And here I was using, you know, 24 meter lens. It's a 24 prime. This is a great prime lens. And I use this a lot in architecture and also in still life. And then sometimes when I'm doing a solo file, I would click the A. This does a lot of automatic um, correction with distortion. And sometimes I come down here, I could work with this, but most of the times I just use A for auto. It does it automatically. And there are other ways you could use guides, but I'd recommend you using the A for auto. Hey, Michael. Yeah. When you go back to where your lenses are yeah. under, the, uh, under the optics. Yeah. Um, can you click on the make? Have they started adding what kind of lenses and or makes have they got going on? Well, this Did is you know? um this is what I use. Well, besides Canon though, I mean. 
if you clicked make, would you not see the the host of of camera brands or lens brands, or did you add your own pro lens profiles in there? Oh, it only if you have Nikon, it only shows Nikon. Since a I'm on Canon, it only shows. A lot Canon. of times, a lot of times when you go when you go to the profile corrections and and all that, and you set up default. It takes it reads from the metadata of the oh, video. okay, yeah. okay, good. Yeah, we'll take the lens and the <clears throat> camera that it uses. Right. Okay, great. And I just have a setup as default, but I know there's other things you can do. And then for effects, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I like to use the grain at zero, but vignetting. See how this is too much? And don't always worry about the number, but you want to make it look natural because if you enter this in a print competition, they would mark it down. And so I want to jump back up to the basic. If I were doing like light painting where I would just sync the white balance and I wouldn't touch the highlights, I wouldn't touch the shadows because light painting is different where you want to preserve as much light as you can. I'm not going to save any changes. Now, what I'm going to do, see what I did was, actually, I'm going to highlight all photos. I'm going to open up the camera raw. And you can also do this in Lightroom, too. I like to use, I like to do everything in camera raw. I'm going to do Control A. I'm going to sync the settings. Everything I use, since I'm not gonna worry about the color mixer, I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna click okay. I already did that. Then I'm gonna do Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. So there are gonna be three Photoshop layers for these three files. Then I'm gonna do a new screen share. See these three files, and I I decided to convert them to GNG. I like using DNG, it's a free download. The first action I'm gonna do is the HR Auto. I'm just going to merge or flatten the image. But when I ran that action, I automatically ran auto layers, auto align layers, and auto blend layers. That happens automatically. And then that's the first thing. Then there's another, and I'm going to make a backup. Duplicate layer. I'm going to run another action, which is good for contrast. It's auto image. So what I did was when I ran that action, I ran auto tone and auto contrast and auto color. And that's when I click on auto image, and I'm also gonna show what my actions look like too. So right now I'm in button mode. So now in the history shows what I did me, auto tone, auto contrast, auto color, and auto align. So I already did this, and they already did the auto align layers on all the blend layers. Now I'm going to run other actions where
Now, when I ran the action, I first did this, and then I did this level adjustments, and then I did both a white signature and black signature. I'm gonna get rid of my white because I have a lot of white here. I'm gonna do my signature. Then I'm gonna do control I to invert it. Where I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make my screen smaller. I like to use the navigator to do that. Get my brush. I'm gonna make sure I'm in the normal blend mode, but I wanna make sure I have opacity, the strength of the brush, and I wanna make sure it's 100%. And So right now, I'm just painting in the improvements in the layer mask, which is this thing right here. And I'm, I'm using, I'm doing this at a Lumosity blend mode. And I'm burning in with, in that color mode. And I'm gonna dodge with the screen mode. I'm gonna use, let me see, I got a chat. Yeah, it's being recorded. Uh, maybe adjust your settings on your computer. I know Windows can be very confusing. If you go to your settings, there's ways to do things. So now I'm going to do a screen blend mode. And I'm going to use, you know, same brush, a very soft round brush. And in many ways, you can use this. Suppose that 100%, I could change the opacity of layer to 20%, but I'm gonna keep it at 100. I'm glad you can hear, that's great. So now what I wanna do, is I want to use auto, but I want to make sure that these, the dark and the whites are contained in the data. They are. Then I want to make the, in the gray way to increase contrast, Yes, you can watch later. This is being recorded. A great, you know, you want to use a mid-tones for the contrast. Then I'm going to run other actions. Let's see. I did. Now I want to run some other actions where I affect the background. I put some final touches in a photograph. And there's many ways that I can do this. These are all my actions MFP that there's a mine. And right now I'm gonna start with this one. So when I run actions, I'm going to just get out of button mode. I'm going to go to my history. I decided to use it as speckle filter, dust and scratches, an unsharp mask. And this fade unsharp mask is this fade will work with the last filter you use. And then filter. This is not a prompt. This is. I usually have it at three. 
And then I use, you know, one sharp mask. I like to have this at 200, but you gotta watch the halos. And when you do that, you know, you can move the photograph. Gotta watch the halos. Watch the halos when you use the unsharp mask. And the fade is when we go to my actions. Which I have the opacity of 100. There it is. I have the fade, Apache Hunter, blend mode, luminous. <coughs> so when I do fade, so suppose I were just to, you know, run this filter, then I go to fade. So I like to send this to luminosity, you know, blend mode at 100%. Now there's other actions too. There's one with the high pass where we talked about the dust and scratches filter, the speckle, and then the high pass filter. We usually have it at nine, and there's other ways to use filter two in other action groups. I'll talk about that later. Now I'm going to put a frame on where switch out a button mode. Good. I'm going to get out of button mode and I'm going to, um, what I do is when I use actions, I use them in groups. I play this action, then I play this action. And the final result, I'm going to, you know, I have an action that if the width is the longest, it's set the fourth out the longest, which is 4,000. But if the height were the longest, the height would be 4,000. Like to use resolution of 300 pixels per inch. I like to have the resample checked up automatic. And then let's see. So when this happens, this action is called. This happens. And then it calls other actions. And then I have a condition where, like I said, if play action, if, if there's landscape, it's where the width is 4,000. If the width, if the height is bigger, then the height is 4,000. And then, so I have a lot of actions I call each other. So we have, you know, like I said, if the height is the biggest, it's 4,000. If the width is the biggest, it's 4,000. Then let's see, there's other actions I can use, but then there's another action. Suppose this for light painting. Actually, I'm gonna open that up. Wrong file, I'm gonna to go to the Photoshop. Oh, 
Oh. Where when I make an action, actually, I'm going to open up a new file here. I'm going to go into something else. Let's see. Um, Okay, this is a good one where is, suppose I make a selection and this is, could be a JPEG of a, I make a selection. I do control C, but then I run this action and I'm gonna show the action is it's easier where I use paste in the place. So edit, when I copy it, I do paste in the place. I gotta be on the right layer. So your layers can be, yeah. So just use, I'm gonna do control C. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run that action where where it's copy, but it automatically sets the blend mode. So it's great for light painting. I'm gonna demonstrate that again. Where it's all enlightened, I'm going to open up just a JPEG. I'm going to open up just one. Where I just want to grip my lasso tool, I'm going to circle this. I'm going to do Control C. I'm going to go here. I'm going to run that action where. What I do is I recommend, you know, go all the way dark. And every time I, I paste it, I get my brush. It's already in the light and blend mode. And I make a brush smaller. This is one way. Where every time, you know, I paste it, it's using the light and blend mode. And it's all done in an action. I just have to, you know, I just have to copy it. And then when I paste it, I just use this action and, and it does it for me. So every time I paste, I run that action. So it's in the light and blend mode. And I'm painting improvements on a black layer mask where you just,
And then when I, the first, also what I do is this. I make sure they go all the way dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another layers adjustment. Make sure, yeah. Now what I do is I go all the way dark and it's really, really black. And then I just paint in all the improvements in, you know, in the black layer mask. I make sure I'm painting white, you know, black hides, white reveals. And if I do too much, I can always push the X. So, and then if I want to put it back, I just push the X, I switch between black and white here. Now I'm going to go, actually, I'll do a new screen share. Now I'm going to talk about my black and white actions. Where where if I just want to, you know, run my actions, I'm going to go to button mode. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from the bottom. This is, I'm using color, but I'm using gradient map. But then when I change it to color, look what happens. We go to my actions. I'm going to run the thing. I'm going to run it with, now with my flesh help, my, I'm using a color blend mode on the threshold layer. I'm gonna run my virants where you look at what I do is I zero out all the way to the left, negative vibrance and saturation. The many ways you do black and white in many ways, you use the mixture channel. And then what I could do, you know, sometimes you use monochromatic, sometimes I don't. And the way, a good way of black and white with the mixer is you zero out the reds, you work with one channel zeroing out at the same time. In many ways, you use a mixture channel. And if you just, sometimes I like to use a monocrack, sometimes I don't. And then there's another one where, let's see. There's even another one I can use where I just, I do the gradient map. And I come over here, it's nice and pink, but when I do the color, Maybe I can try another, you know, luminosity, color. And I can always, you know, lower the opacity. But I just like to use the most natural where gradients, threshold, vibrance, channel mixer, many ways to use it. Now I'm going to show up presentation where I talk about screenshots. So this part is going to be on the screenshots where I first talk about Adobe Camera Raw and then Adobe Photoshop. First, we'll start with Adobe Camera Raw. Basically, I get the white bounce. I click in a photograph. I neutralize. 
HDR photography, I zero out the highlights, I plus out the shadows. For regular still life with a single file, I do the same thing, but with light painting, I don't touch the highlights because I want to keep them in there because it's different. And I want to, I don't touch the shadows either. And, then I, and for HDR or non light painting, I just like to increase the exposure and the contrast. And I know that there's other ways you can, for black and white photography, I know you could also, you could plus out, negative out the vibrance and the saturation. But I like to just go into Photoshop and do that with the layers. Curve selection, I just like to work with the curve. I don't touch this part. I just like to make an S. Now for sharpening with the detail is I like to use for non-portraiture, anything over 140, noise reduction, 50 or greater. And then color noise reduction, look at the photograph. I actually like to use um, 32 where you go from 50 to 100 or 200 to really, when you increase the noise, you wanna make sure you don't have block spots and then I go back to fit and view. In the optics, I like to use remove chromatic aberration and use profile corrections. And I just have it at default, but there's other things you can do, like was previously said. Since I'm using Canon, I'll show all the Canon lens, and I chose that I'm using the EF 100 to 400. And as the profile for that, I'll talk about vignetting later. So for still life, I love to use the Canon Prime lens, like the 35, the 24, uh, the 85. And then for outdoor, I like to use both the zoom and the still in the um, primes. The geometry, if it's a single file, I like to use, click the A. This does most of the work, works most of the time. Then with three merge files, I like to combine the file and then go in the camera raw. This seems to work better. At least it looks better for me. Some people maybe like to use auto for all three merged, but I like to uh, make all my adjustments, go into um, Photoshop, flatten the image. Then if you go to the um, raw interface, it's one of the filters, you just click A. I seem to like that better. Now, maybe I could rotate it, but I'd rather do it in Photoshop where you just use the rulers. And vignetting, um, you know, if you look at, look at the photograph, you want to make it look natural. You don't want to go all the way to the left that it's probably too dark. If you go all the way to right, it's too light. So just look at the photograph. Don't worry about the numbers. Talk about black and whites. Oh yeah, for in Photoshop, yeah, I could use you know the gradient to gradient map layer. Like I want to put it in a square to put some um, characteristics to the sky. And then I'm going to talk about you know Adobe Photoshop. The first action that I do, the HR Auto, where I have three raw files and layers, these two actions happen, one right after the other. You just have to select the layers, and then the second action I is the Auto Tones, the tone, the contrast, and the color, one right after the other. And then the dodge and burn, where I first play this action, it, play, it burns and dodges. This happens first. So this happens first. And then the levels adjustment layer, I'd like to click in the auto. And then the white signature, the black signature. And I usually, usually delete, depending on the photograph, the white or black. And again, I burn with luminosity blend mode. 
soft brush, I dodge with the screen blend mode. There are many ways you use the back, you know, the effect of background on the whole photograph. I use the dust and scratches filter. Then you use the, no, the speckle filter. No prompt comes up if you click on the speckle. And then the high pass. This is in the others, other section of the filters. <laughs> this is my frame where I call this. And this happens, then I call this, this happens. And then I have a condition. If it's landscape, this happens because the width is bigger, but if the height is bigger, this happens. And then MFP filters comes. So I group my actions, I use them in many ways. Yeah, and after I do that action, I'll go back to the screen. After I do all this action, this is where it'll look something like this, because the width is the longest, so it's 4,000 in pixels. And the resolution is 300 pixels per inch, and I like to resample using the automatic. And the unsharp mask settings, where I like to use maybe 200, but remember, look at the photograph, move it around, make sure you're not, you know, putting in halos. I like to use the radius at 1.0 pixels, even if for HDR, you're safe with that. You use 1.5, it's probably too much. You're affecting the pixels. And then the threshold is a good contrast between six and seven uh, levels. There's another set of actions where I call it a speckle filter, which is over here. Then I call the dust and scratches. And then I call the unsharp mask. And then, and they'll say, they'll say fade unsharp mask. And this is capacity 100 and mode is luminosity blend mode. There's another background set of actions where the speckle is here, the unsharp mask, and then it doesn't scratches, the unsharp is less, but this time I decided not to use the fade. And then my JPEGs, you know, workflow is, I always have the JPEG 100. I ask every time where I export it, yeah, the copyright and contact. So as a person for the web, I'm gonna check this off, convert the sRGB. Now, if you wanna paste this in Photoshop, you don't wanna check convert the sRGB. It all depends That's how you use the photograph. How are you gonna use it for the web, for more work in Photoshop? But and then, the action pace in place is for light painting where I make the selection with the lasso and I have pace in place. So it produces this and it's a light and blend mode. So it's easier, it's easier in light painting this way when you set the blend mode to lighten because when you painting the objects will be easier. Then there's frequency separation where you have the high pass filter, which is here, and it's a prompt. You can change it to 1514. And the high frequency layer is great for cloning, which is right here. Then the blend mode is linear light, 
but the low frequency is a low blend mode. And I like to make all my selections here. Now, some people use it, they do a layer for cloning, a layer for another tool, but I like to put all my cloning techniques on this channel and all my selections on this channel. And it's a smarter way to clone. <clears throat> and then the Photoshop actions for black and white. We have the channel mixer. Where I just work with one channel zeroing it out. There's another way to use another way to use the channel mixer where I have with chromatic checked off. And there's a vibrance where I negative out the vibrance and the saturation. Gradient map is where yeah, I use a, a gradient map the layer, adjustment layer. And then I just change a blend mode to color. The hue saturation is where I negative out the hue 100. I negative out the saturation. You just you just taking out the hue. You're taking out the saturation. Now, if you need contrast, you want to adjust the lightness, which is underneath the hue and saturation. Then there's a threshold layer where the blend meta just changed the color. Then there's other ways you can have more complicated black and whites where you can have a you can have a black and white actions in a group. You can call it I like to separate the layer, then call the other actions where then I work on the levels. I use auto to make it look natural, and then I adjust the curves. And this is what my workflow looks like where, you know, layers, channels, adjustments, properties, info, navigators up here, swatches, libraries, our brushes are here. So that's about the end of the program. Are there any questions? You can unmute if you have any questions. Let me check the chat. And I am recording this. You want to bring up any adjustment layers in Photoshop? Okay, it looks like. Yeah, um, yeah, you want to basically, when you edit a model, like we could even, what I can do is I can give you a starter just from, I'm going to go into Photoshop. Let's go to Photoshop. Let's see. I'm going to open up. Let's see. Oops. Oops. I'm going to bring up a new model.
I'm going to go to bridge. I thought I had a model here. No, I did. But what you want to do, I'm going to bring up another photograph. I thought I had it here, but let's see. Let's go. Suppose, let me go to the Photoshop, okay. Okay. Basically, like that layer, you want to work on dodging and burning on the body, and it makes, and you want to work in the eyes. And so, suppose this were a model. I'm going to reset my workspace. Suppose this were a model, same technique. You want to, many ways you can work with models. You can burn just what you want to improve. You can dodge, but you just want to improve. Then you work the eyes. And the ways to work with eyes is like, if you want to make the eyes lighter, the brush mode, you want to use screen. If you want to make them darker, you could use multiplier dark. So model, it's, it, it's a little different, but the actions work the same. So I am recording this. Um, so looks like there's no questions. I'm gonna put the recording and I'll post it. I'm going to post the recording. I can do this again too. Another session on this. Thank you for all for watching.